This is a case of an adolescent male who presented with the history of early fatigue after minim minimal activity. Uh, the patient had a presence of a pectus excavatum deformity, which had been more pronounced after the age of 10. The patient underwent pulmonary function testing, which showed borderline pulmonary function and a normal echocardiogram. A Haller index was calculated based on his pectus excavatum deformity uh, to be 3.65, indicating a need for surgical repair. This is an external view of the patient's pectus excavatum deformity showing a slightly asymmetric deformity, uh, more pronounced on the left side. The procedure was begun with the right-sided thoracoscopy via a 5mm port and a 5mm 30-degree scope. The internal view of the pectus excavatum deformity can be seen here. A small lateral incision was made and a subcutaneous tunnel was created to the inflection point of the right side of the pectus deformity. An introducer hook was guided into the right hemithorax under thoracoscopic guidance and beginning of the uh, anterior mediastinal dissection was begun. The hook was brought through the uh, medi anterior mediastinum to the left hemithorax and brought out through the chest in the inflection point of the left side of the pectus deformity and brought out through a similar skin incision on the opposite side. The pectus deformity could be seen instantly corrected on passage of the hook. Umbilical tapes were applied to the end of the hook and brought out through the right-sided incision. The pre-bent pectus bar was then brought to the field and attached to the umbilical tapes. Using the umbilical tapes as a guide, the pre-bent pectus bar is then replaced into the chest cavity and guided along the same tract as the initial introducer hook and carefully guided anterior to the heart through transmediastinally uh, out through the same tract. Once the bar is in position, the bar is rotated bilaterally until it is in the perfect position. The sternum can be seen elevating from the heart as the bar is being turned. Care is taken to ensure that the bar is flat up against the sternum and not in danger of flipping on its own. An internal view of the corrected defect can be seen here. Careful inspection for bleeding and the bar entry site and the bar exit site is performed here. Uh, the bar can be seen easily passing through with no bleeding. Uh, the right side of the bar is then secured using a single zero proline suture uh, placed via a Carter Thompson device. Uh, this bar is then anchored to the rib using this suture. The left side of the bar is anchored to the chest wall using a bar stabilizer and a single stainless steel sternal wire. CO2 insufflation is stopped, the right lung is re-expanded by the anesthesiology team, and the patient did not require a chest drain after all of the CO2 is evacuated. This is the on-table corrected defect view, and this is the seven-day post-op view of the patient's corrected pectus deformity. The patient was pain-free and not requiring any oral analgesics on post-operative day seven.